Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here. Apologies if this post-fight video sounds a little rushed. I've got a lot on today, but I've got a few spare minutes, so I thought I would get this video done. But anyway, Artur Baturbiev defeats Oleksandr Vodsek to become the new lineal light heavyweight champion, and also he now becomes the unified IBF and WBC light heavyweight champion. So congratulations to Artur Baturbiev for getting the biggest win of his career. I've got to say, I am pleased for Artur Baturbiev. Not because I was rooting for him or anything like that. I like both guys, but, you know, Baturbiev has been a guy who struggled to get fights. He's had injury problems, he's been inactive, and his career's never really got going. So, I'm pleased he's got this big win. Hopefully now, this really does catapult his career to another level. So I am pleased for Artur Baturbiev, but credit to both men for putting on a really good show. I thoroughly enjoyed this fight. Now, I picked Baturbiev going into this fight. I felt that Oleksandr Vodsek had to be a lot more perfect than Artur Baturbiev going into this fight. He would have to fight a damn near flawless fight to win this fight, whereas Baturbiev could take more risks because I felt he was the tougher guy, the stronger guy, the harder puncher, he could be the guy taking more risks in comparison to Vodsek. In layman's terms, I just felt Artur Baturbiev was the stronger, tougher man coming into this fight. And I think that played out, to be honest with you. We picked Baturbiev by stoppage. We are giving ourselves a pat on the back for getting this one right. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding, but um, yeah. First six rounds, I felt Oleksandr Vodsek was sticking and moving fairly effectively. In fact, after six rounds, I felt Vodsek was well in the fight, arguably winning, you know, something like four rounds to two. Um, but yeah, Baturbiev was coming forwards, and Vodsek was finding him with that jab. I enjoyed how Vodsek was switching his right hand from body to head. He'd land the straight right to the body, the straight right to the head, and, you know, he was he was timing Baturbiev fairly effectively with straight punches. The thing I did notice though, despite him having success, it was how he was looking doing it. And at times, even when even when Vodic was landing good shots, he looked, in my opinion at least, very panicky, very concerned, and it looked like he was fighting with anxiety. It looked like he was fighting to keep Baturbiev at arm's length. And that can win you a fight, but he never really looked like he was going to take the initiative in this fight, despite him boxing well in certain rounds. And even in the first six rounds, when Vodic was at his best, Baturbiev was having success himself. You know, up close, he was effectively working the body of Oleksandr Vodic. I noticed a couple of times early on in this fight where Vodic felt the body shots of Artur Baturbiev. And that was a theme going throughout this fight. So the Baturbiev bodywork was very effective from early on in this bout. Not only that, the pressure in general was very effective. Even if he wasn't winning rounds at times, just the mental pressure Baturbiev put on Oleksandr Vodsek. We mentioned the feet of Baturbiev going into this fight. He's got very quick feet coming forwards. He cuts the ring extremely quickly and that is due to a technique called shifting. Now, he wasn't doing it quite as much in this fight, but he's a master at closing distance very quickly. That was another reason why Oleksandr Vodic was fighting in a panicky fashion, in my opinion. And not only that, in the first six rounds, Baturbiev was showing good craft. You know, Baturbiev is seen as a come-forward, seek-and-destroy fighter. And don't get it twisted, he is that. He's also a very good boxer, very crafty with certain shots. Look at how Vodsek would throw the jab and sometimes fall in. Baturbiev always met him with that sneaky uppercut as, as Vodsek was coming in. He's a very sneaky fighter and he's got deceptively good timing. And I think we saw that in several rounds in this fight. But after six rounds, I felt the writing was on the wall for Oleksandr Vodsek. Vodsek was tiring, and he looked like a man who wanted the fight to be over. 
Um, his feet were slowing down. He wasn't throwing the same amount of punches. And, you know, Baterbiev's physicality and mental pressure was really starting to take a toll. And Votic had some success in these rounds, in rounds 6, 7, 8 and 9. He landed some good shots. I think, in fact, in the 8th, he really caught Baterbiev's attention with a couple of good shots. But it was few and far in between. Baterbiev was just closing the distance, walking him down, using that power jab, working the body, uh, uppercuts through the middle. He was just working Oleksandr Votek, and Votek was hurt several times to the body, and he was buzzed to the head, and it was just a matter of time. And round 10 was where this fight ended. It was like a culmination of pressure, where, yes, Votek was hurt all the time with these knockdowns, but he just didn't have anything left. You know, he was dropped three times in round 10, and he basically took a knee all three times, and the referee waved it off after the third knockdown, or, or the third time Votic took a knee, and that's where the fight was ended. And by the way, Baterbiev actually scored a knockdown in round one that was revoked by the commission. Baterbiev basically pushed Votic over, that was the correct decision. But yeah, round 10 was where this fight ended. And for me, this fight was eerily similar to Antonio Margarito versus Miguel Cotto 1, in a sense where, just like Cotto, Votic was boxing quite well for the first six rounds, but he couldn't, he couldn't do that for 12 rounds. You could tell the pressure was starting to tell, you could see the cracks starting to appear, and it just culminated in, in Votic having nothing left, much like it did to Miguel Cotto against Antonio Margarito. To me, these fights are eerily similar. But yeah, credit to Artur Baterbiev for getting the job done. This guy is going to be a problem at light heavyweight. He really is. Finally, he is realising his potential. He was a great amateur. Now, he's achieved something as a pro. I would love to see the fight with Sergei Kovalev. If Kovalev beats Canelo, let's have that fight. That's a great fight. You know, all Russian affair. Excellent fight. Baterbiev versus Dmitry Bivol. Again, all Russian affair. Beautiful fight. But um, it appears that Baterbiev will take on his IBF mandatory next, Fan Long Meng. Fan Long Meng is a fringe contender at best. So Baterbiev will destroy him. But yeah, we'll see what happens with Baterbiev's future. As for Oleksandr Vodzik, that was a very tough fight. That was a very long, painful fight. So he needs a bit of time out. But he can come back. He's still a very good fighter. Former world champion. Still world rated. Oleksandr Vodzik can come back. So no biggie there. Share your thoughts below. Peace.